the start of your filmmaking career, finding a mentor who will take you under their wing and show you the ropes can literally save years off your professional journey. By learning from someone who's been there and done that, you'll be able to avoid mistakes before you make them and get meaningful feedback on your projects and also get advice about what moves to make down the road. I've been lucky enough to have had a few amazing mentors at different stages of my career, and without them, I really doubt I'd be where I am today. And that's what this video is all about mentors, what they can do for you, and four of the different ways I've been successful in finding mine in the past. In fact, mentors have been so important for me that as this channel gets near to 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing, I've decided to launch a mentorship program of my own where I take on one early career filmmaker from this channel's audience and give them one-on-one -on -one feedback for a full year. At the end of the video, I'm going to tell you how to apply for that program, so if you think that's something you'd be interested in, stick around for that. Okay, let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back, and if you're new here, my name is Luke Forsyth, and on this channel, I teach the skills I've learned over 10 years working as a professional documentary filmmaker and photographer. First off, you might notice that I am not in my office, and that's because I booked a last minute job and didn't have the time to pre-record videos before I left. So for the next few weeks, you're gonna be seeing me inside this hotel room without all the nice lighting and prepared backgrounds. Apologies in advance if the next few videos are a little rough around the edges, technically speaking. I'm wearing this radio rig because I might actually have to respond to an emergency call so let's hope I can get through this video before that happens. Attention. Emergency. All personnel. Like I said, I've had mentors at every stage of my documentary career. First as a photojournalist, and then later as a filmmaker. Without these people, it would have taken me way, way longer to get where I am today. And I'm just talking about the main mentors here, the people who have given me ongoing advice over a long period of time, and not even mentioning all the countless other people who've helped me in smaller ways. You really can't make it very far on your own in this industry, so figuring out how to find a mentor of your own could really help you level up faster. Just a quick note here, before you can take advantage of the things a mentor can help you with, you really do need to make sure you've done the fundamental work to make yourself worth mentoring in the first place. If you've never shot anything, don't have a reel, or haven't taken any steps at all on your own, it's gonna be hard to convince people to take a chance on you. There's so much information out there on YouTube already, you can definitely self-teach enough to make yourself a reel or shoot a two minute short about your friends. So if you come to someone asking for help without anything to show, you're basically saying you want them to do the work for you. So make sure you've put in the hours on your own before you ask others to give you a hand. Just a tip, when you're starting out, even assuming you've put in the time to get a reel or a short together, you still won't have much experience to show and it can be really challenging to find someone who will take you seriously. The one thing that everyone can do at this stage is to reach out to people you respect and ask for their help. You could even offer to work for free in exchange for on-the-job learning. But if I'm being honest, in my experience, trying to find a mentor this way is one of the hardest ways because you're probably going to have to reach out to a ton of people before anything happens. But that's not to say you shouldn't do it, because it can work, and in the beginning you have to try as many different ways of hustling as you can. So even if it can be tough to get serious responses, you should absolutely reach out to people and see if there's any way to get involved with someone more established. If it were me, I'd try and find some way of adding value in the proposition for the person you're contacting, like maybe working for free or, I don't know, any other way you can think of that you'd actually make life easier for that filmmaker. Otherwise, you're basically just asking for a job, and that can scare some people who might have made great mentors. Some of you have actually been reaching out to me through this channel, which I love. It's super cool. I really like hearing from all of you, and if you want to practice your introductions on me in a judgment-free environment, go for it. And I am keeping a list of where all of you are in case a situation comes up when I can get you out in the field or maybe hire you as an AC or a PA or whatever, but the problem here, and why I think this might be one of the harder ways to find a mentor, is that we'd have to get very lucky for me to be able to bring you on. I say lucky because unless I happen to land a job in the exact part of the world where you're living, it's sort of unlikely that I'm gonna be able to convince a production company to pay the travel expenses of someone I've never met and can't vouch for. Not including the cost of getting a person to location, it can cost thousands of dollars to put someone up in a hotel room and feed them for a few weeks, and the vast majority of companies I've worked for aren't likely to take a chance on someone new like this. That's not to say it can't happen, but unless you're in the same city as the person you're trying to work with, 
you might not have a lot of success with this one. Now the flip side of that is if you do happen to live in the same place as that person or in the same place the shoot is taking place, the odds go way up and you just never know when things might go your way. Approaching people this way is a game of chance kind of because you'll probably need to reach out to a lot of people before something hits. But if it does hit, you might've found your mentor just by sending emails and that makes it totally worth your time to try. So if cold calling people and offering to work for free isn't the most reliable, what else can you do? Well, when I was still an English teacher living in South Korea and becoming a photojournalist was just an impossible sounding dream, I religiously followed the blog of a war photographer named Zariah Miller. This was over a decade ago or more, and by today's standards, the website was pretty basic. But at that time, it was really rare to find someone sharing their knowledge on the internet for free, especially in the world of documentary media. I loved his work and his DIY philosophy, and I desperately wanted to learn from him. The good news was that he offered one-on-one -on -one workshops all over the world, but the bad news was that it cost $10,000. And I'm talking about real US dollars, not our crazy Canadian Monopoly dollars. At the time, it seemed like an impossible amount of money, but as I got more and more focused on photography and committed to it as a serious pursuit instead of a hobby, I started thinking that maybe it was worth it. After about a year of debating, I decided to stop thinking and just go for it. I was still living in Korea, but I was planning to leave and start a post-grad program when my contract was up. For some reason though, I just couldn't kick the idea of becoming a photojournalist, and so I went for it. I dropped out of the school, got a refund, and transferred the money to Zarai instead. Now, I'd be lying if I said I wasn't freaked out because trading in a master's degree for 10 days of photography seemed like a crazy risk. We decided to meet in Bangladesh and I'm really happy to say that after the first afternoon I knew I'd made the right decision. We spent the whole 10 days shooting like we were out on an assignment together and in the mornings and the evenings he'd go over my work and give me intensive feedback on what to work on the next day. He then helped me lay out a roadmap for the next five years of my career and by the time the 10 days was up I felt like I was actually ready to go after the dream for real. Now, it's not like he handed me some sort of magic potion that turned me into a professional overnight, but he really did put me on the path to success and within two years I was shooting for the New York Times. And that's the second way I'd suggest you go about finding a mentor, by paying someone you think that can really help you. Now it would be great if everything was free like it is on YouTube, but the reality is that high-end professionals need to make money and just like I was gonna pay the university for my graduate degree, I had to pay him if I wanted access to his knowledge. It was a risk, but 100% worth it in the end. And actually, since then, he's passed me several large jobs that have paid me back for that workshop and then some. In fact, just before COVID started, we did a big shoot in Kenya together for the Gates Foundation. We were working side by side as peers with him shooting the stills and me shooting video, which was a really cool moment in terms of my career coming full circle. Because this experience was so good for me, I'm actually thinking about how to launch a similar program program of my own, but it's kind of tough to figure out how to price something like that these days and even what the interest level is. Let me know in the comments if you think a one-to-one -one program where we'd go out into the world together just like I did with Soraya would be of interest to you, or if that just sounds like it would be way too expensive. I'm not even sure if I could figure out the logistics of something like that, so it's a long shot, but let me know anyways. Soraya was my first mentor, but since then I've had others, and after that workshop, the rest were much cheaper. Not that I regret paying the money, because that experience had literally changed my life, but you probably can't be paying that kind of money again and again unless you've got a juicy trust fund or a side hustle in investment banking. Fun coupons! Yeah. My next mentor came about five years later, uh, at a time when I was still shooting photos but was transitioning more and more into video. Ed Cashy was one of my favorite photographers at the time, and if you've never heard of him, he was a regular contributor to National Geographic and one of the main members of the Seven Photo Agency, which is a big name in the photojournalism world. I noticed that he was also starting to add more and more video into his workflow, so when he made a social media post calling for applicants to a three-year subsidized program he was going to be teaching, I started writing right away. We're only going to accept, I think, 12 students and I knew it was going to be competitive, but the program itself was free other than the cost of getting to and from the location. To be honest, I really didn't expect to be chosen, but I was, and the next summer I flew down to Colorado and met the group. The program was funded by a super rich arts patron and it lasted for three years. We'd meet for a week a year in person every summer in Colorado, and then virtually two or three more times over the course of the year. The other students were amazing and doing crazy good work and some of them have gone on to win huge awards like World Press Awards and all sorts of other crazy things. I got really close to the teachers and I'll sometimes even stay at Ed's house when I'm in New York. He helped me as I transitioned away from traditional photojournalism into more of a multimedia role and even now, years later, I know I can always call him if I need advice. I don't know if that particular program is still running but there are a ton of application-based programs out there 
and that would be the next way I'd say to start looking for mentors. The New York Times Portfolio Review, for example, accepts both photo and video students, and for a ton of film festivals out there like Sundance, they'll often have application-based programs or master classes that can be life-changing if you get into them. So spend some time on Google, make a list of the ones that seem interesting, and keep track of application deadlines in a Google Doc or something. All of them are free too, which is a bonus. I got into the New York Times Portfolio Review a few years ago, and it was extremely helpful both in terms of feedback and networking context, so it's well worth the time it takes to fill in the applications. The last one I'm going to talk about today has also been huge for me, and it's also free. Once I'd moved full-time into the world of documentary video, I started to get a few small jobs here and there, normally shooting B-cam for other more established DPs. I always made it a point to work as hard as possible on these and to try and make a good impression on the people I was working for. On one of these jobs in Mexico, I met Pablo Durano, who's probably one of the world's best adventure cameramen. He's worked with Jimmy Chin and Renan Ozturk and all the other big names in that world, and he's an absolute machine of a human being. So when I got the chance to work for Pablo, I made sure to give everything I had to the job, and in the end, it paid off. A few months later, he called me up and asked if I was available for something else. Again, I worked my ass off, and a while later, he called me back. I think in total now, we've done 10 or 12 jobs together in Brazil, New Zealand, Colombia, Papua New Guinea, and a bunch of other places. Over the years, our relationship has changed from me to working as his assistant to being a regular B-cam shooter for him, and now we're just close friends. These days, I'm not doing a ton of B-cam shooting, which means we don't see each other as much as I'd like but the stuff I learned from working for him advanced my career by years. So if you're lucky enough to get some early jobs as an assistant or second shooter, I'd say put everything you have into them and keep in touch with the people after. If you make yourself invaluable to that person, I think you'll find they'll be happy to bring you around with them because you just make life easier. And in exchange, you get to pick their brains about everything from their shooting style to what kind of gear to buy. Win-win for everybody. Okay, so there are a few ways you can go about looking for a mentor on your own. None of it is fast or easy, but in my experience, it's always been worth it. So worth it that I actually want to start a mentorship program of my own so I can help another doc filmmaker in the same way those people help me. I'm gonna pick one person and mentor them for a full year, which means project reviews, feedback, career advice, and the ability to write to me with questions as they come to you. If you want to apply, follow the link in the description for some more information and from there to the online application. Put your answers in a Google Doc and put the link to that doc in a comment on this video so I can see if you're subscribed or not. Now I've never designed a system like this and I'm not sure if I found the most elegant application process, so apologies and if you've got any ideas how to do this better, let me know down below. The application itself should be pretty painless, just three questions about why you want a mentor, why the time is right for you, and a description of the project and progress that you want to focus on. Like I said at the start of this video, the people who are most ready to be mentored are the ones who've started the process on their own. So I'm only looking for people who have been shooting already, hence the need to send a link to a project in progress. This isn't a program if you're just looking for someone to give you an easy way to make money with a camera, but if you're interested in making meaningful documentaries for the long term and want some long term feedback from someone like me, I really hope you'll apply. I'm also going to start offering project consultation calls, so if you really want to pick my brain on something specific, there will be a paid option with a calendar sign-up system that's open to everyone all the time, and I'll link to that in the description as well, but the one-on-one -on -one program is totally free. Now this isn't about me giving a job to someone or a shout out on social media, it's for people who are making their own stuff already and are striving for that next level. That's exactly what my mentors did for me and what I'm hoping to pay forward to someone soon. I'm gonna keep the application open until this channel hits 10,000 subscribers, at which point I'll announce the winner via email and we can get to work. Can't wait to see who's out there and I'm seriously looking forward to working with one of you soon. I wish I could take on more than one student, but I really wanna be able to give that person my full attention and as you can see, I'm pretty busy a lot of the time, so for now at least, I'm gonna to have to limit it to just one. We'll see what happens in the future, maybe I can expand it, but for this opportunity, there's only one spot available. I'm sorry. I hope that video was helpful and that it gave you some ideas on how to find a mentor, even if it isn't me. If you did like it, think about subscribing or giving the video a like because it really does help. Or maybe check out this other video I made on the first major career decision all documentary filmmakers need to make. See ya.